Hello everyone, uh, my name is Gianni Antichi and I'm gonna present the SICOM 2021 topic preview on programmable data plan. Now, uh, let's start a little bit with context first. So the context is the end of Moore's law and then our scaling. So effectively, uh, we can no longer expect a new general purpose processor to improve performance exponentially. And because of this, the, 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 this problem has, um, has fostered the rise of a domain-specific processor. Now, if you think about, for example, graphics, there has been uh, GPUs, or if you think about machine learning, there has been uh, TPUs, and those, this hardware uh, um, provides better performance and power efficiency than general purpose processors. Now, if you if you ask yourself then you know what about packet processing so the, for the packet processing uh, we we have been seeing now the rise of programmable data planes and programmable data planes uh, you know promise the ability to change packet processing while having similar power consumption and cost as fixed functions one now for example just think about how you know, hardware for packet processing was before. So you had a fixed function hardware, then you were you the operator that wanted to use the, these these hardware to you know for packet enter P. You you know you wanted to change the processing or do something with your own packet and then a hub output. So the way to use this hardware was effectively dictated by the hardware itself. So the hardware is what telling you, this is how I process packet. You can partially change my behavior using my APIs, but this is what you can do. So now with programmable data planes, the things is completely different. And now you, in a programmatic way, you can effectively tell to the programmable hardware, say, this is how you shall process packet. <clears throat> and this is really the key driver in realizing the next generation of network services and application. Um, now, if we look a little bit inside this hardware, just to get a, an idea on how it looks like inside and what, you know, the, the type of naming that you will find during the, during the session is really effectively from a high level perspective is composed by a parser and match action tables. Now, if we if we look just about the parser, it's a programmable parser that select the fields of interest. So, so when a packet enter, um, you you know when a packet enter, you just take some fields of the packet that depending on what you are interested in. And then you have a, a series uh, of stages of match action tables. So they are table where of the, the headers of the packet that you are interested in uh, match against some rules that you that you put. And then depending on the match, you have an associated action. And effectively in this match action table, you can perform packet modification and of course egress selection to, to select which port the packet is supposed to go out from. Now, mm, the question is really how can you make this a structure programmable and how can you impose your behavior on this. So the way that it works, and this is the names that you will see during the presentation, it's really everything starts with you as an operator and then you write a, a P4 program. So P4 is an open source language for, for, for programming really the hardware, the data plane. And this P4 program, um, gets into a P4 compiler that gets an output. And, um, and this output is the one that really configure your programmable hardware. Uh, and these, within this program, you effectively can um, decide how the packets are processed. So this means uh, what, for example, for the programmable parser, uh, what are the fields of your interest in your packet? So you can redefine even the uh, the, the, the way you know or, or new, you can find new headers for your packets, but also you you define here the the number of match action tables. So what are the tables that you know the fields of your interest that will be matched against? And then of course this program will have you know APIs that are exposed by the hardware to operator in, in, in a sense that you might have to insert some rules depending on the table that you define. And then of course, you will have APIs to do that. 
this is a hot topic. I mean, if you if you if you think about it, this is like uh, uh, you know that there is like a number of places where you can have research on, on this, and and indeed the past second papers has touched upon many of those aspects. For example, there has been like a lot of paper around new application and use cases, or better languages and compilers. So uh, if we return back to this figure, if you think about it, you know, for new application and use cases is really about, okay, so I wanna enable my switch, my hardware to do something that, you know, previous hardware couldn't do that. So I'm gonna write my P4 program and compile it here and uh, enable a new application. Or, if we look, for example, uh, here on the better languages and compilers, it's, uh, it's gonna be, it's really about, oh, okay, so is a P4 enough? Can, should we extend P4? Should we make it, you know, uh, do we need the more, um, let's say expressiveness for P4? Or, and, you know, how should we extend it? Or for P4 compiler itself, you know, how we should compile the program into the hardware? Is there a more optimized way to do so? And uh, what are the problems associated with it? And finally, right, really, you know, for the hardware community more, there is also new hardware design, which is like, uh, if, we, if we take back here, like what are the hardware primitives that we should add to just the simple parts of the match action table that can enable new use cases? Is parser plus match action table enough? Should we add more hardware support for new use cases? So if you think about it, this is um, a topic that is really a right of um, many interesting paths. And in the past, SICOM, as I said, like there has been lots and lots of paper that touch upon those aspects. What about this one, this year? So this year we have uh, five super interesting paper um, and uh, I'm gonna describe all of them now uh, in the following. So the first one in, in the session is a programmable packet scheduling with a single queue. Uh, now, uh, the, uh, let, let, let's start from the context. Uh, packet scheduling is really the decision process used to choose which packets should be serviced next. So if you should think about uh, a switch, uh, you will have uh, a series of packets that enter, and then maybe you want to decide, uh, you know, if you want to um, process your packet in a different order with respect to the, one, the, the, the order where the packet arrived. And this paper is asking, the question is, uh, what are the minimum hardware requirements for programmable packet scheduling? So what really we should do to, uh, to, to have uh, uh, a scheduling which is a programmable. And the paper really uh, proposed a new approach using a single FIFO queue and a show a prototype in P4 and something that can run in programmable switches there. Then we have a Sailfish, which is accelerating cloud scale, multi-tenant, multi-service gateways with programmable switches. Now here, the context uh, is uh, a, a little bit different with, uh, with respect to the previous one. And, uh, and, uh, and just to set the expectation here, a, a cloud gateway is a packet forwarding device, which provides the performance and reliable connectivity to globally distributed cloud resources. Now, the question that this is a super interesting paper from authors of Alibaba, Purple Mountain Laboratory, Laboratories, and Tsinghua University is really how to scale its forwarding performance. Because the paper like advocated that the you know general purpose CPU are not enough anymore for scaling, and what they show is that they 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 provide a new prototype uh, written in P4, and they discuss about the challenge that they faced to implement this uh, cloud gateway in P4, and effectively since this is a program uh, a prototype in P4 they were able to run it in you know, programmable switches and they share the, the uh, deployment experience. Then we move into uh, Coco Sketch and high performance sketch based measurement over arbitrarily partial key query. Now, if you think about the state of the art the sketch design, which sketch are, let's say, compact data structure for flow measurement. 
usually they measure one particular flow key. So when you design a sketch, you decide, you know, what's your input key uh, to your data structure. It can be the source IP, it can be the destination IP, it can be the five tuple. And based on that, then, you know, these uh, data structure gets pop populated. And, and then you can use this data structure to query and understand what is going on with your traffic. So the question, the, the basic research question that this paper is asking is really, can we predefine a key range and then a query time decide the key? Um, for example, can we just say, I don't know, um, five tuple and then maybe I wanna a little bit more uh, drill down and get a little bit more insight from that. So to do that, they propose a new sketch design and they provide a new prototype, again, here, here written in P4, uh, but, uh, but also they show that the, this solution can run in, of course, the programmable switches because it can do in P4, but also they show in, uh, they can run in many other devices, for example, uh, or FPGA, it can run also on CPU and in OpenBSD switch. And we have also uh, the, the, the next paper to discuss is a red plane enabling full tolerance stateful in the switch application. Now, the, the question here is uh, still related to switching and it's about, you know, uh, now that you have the, this possibility to program the switch behavior and put application into the switch. So the question that, that this paper is asking is how to make a stateful application running on programmable switch fault tolerant. And what if, you know, the switch fails and you have a stateful application? And what really this uh, paper provides is a state store for in-switch applications. So if you have an application that is stateful and you wanna um, load into a programmable switch, uh, how these can make it uh, resilient even if the switch failed. And what they do here, they provide new APIs for developer to rewrite their stateful P4 program and make them full tolerant. So, so far we discussed mainly all those aspects that they were really related to if you, if the, the switch hardware, right? So uh, we discussed, you know, programmable switches in the context of measurements, in the context of uh, uh, gateways in, in, in the context of also fault to tolerant application. But programmable data planes are not just about switches. So that really data plane programmability is more than that. So if you think about this figure uh, and you, and this is like a, you know, a very high level picture of an endos. So you have a network interface card and then the packet from the network inter interface card, they go to the driver the, of the network interface card, then maybe to the kernel, and then they go to user space. Now, if you think about it, even here, we can talk about and we can discuss that this is uh, somehow depending where you put your processing data plane programmability, because now you have a smart NIC where you can insert the logic here in the NIC. So effectively you can program the behavior of the hardware and to perform some operation in your packets. But also now with the recent advances with eBPF and XDP, you can program uh, at the kernel. So you can have in kernel packet processing in a programmatic way. And this is kind of a programmable data plane as well. And then of course you have those, all of those, you know, you, you can have um, application or user space with, that they are enhanced by fast IO frameworks. The reason why I'm saying this is uh, first of all, because Programmable data plane is not really just harder, but mainly because the last paper, uh, which is revisiting the OpenBSD switch data plane 10 years later, it's really discussed about the experience in supporting OVS OpenBSD switch, which is a software switch uh, that is adopted in many data center networks. So it's a software switch, it's a switch that is um, yes, uh, used mainly at the end of the, to connect uh, containers and VM, so for virtualized networking. So what this paper is doing mainly is uh, uh, propose the implementation of OBS using the new, a new Linux socket type, which is called AFXDP, and also discuss the challenges faced and lessons learned. So well, this paper is really about sharing the experience and support and a new design of OBS. Um, 
So um, the, the session, the technical session for programmable data plane will happen on Tuesday, 24th of August uh, from 3.50 p.m. to 5.15 p.m. ET. And hope to see you there.